All right, let's do this. Everyone's going there for day one at the UGX for their super early adopted passes. I'm actually looking fuck excited myself. Yeah, you can see the EGX slabs uh -huh. over there. Just to welcome us all, it's like they knew we're coming. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. And here I am, it's like half past nine in the morning now, in my watch, and I'm really excited to actually be in the line. I wait till 10 a.m. before this thing opens, and an hour later, the other people get to come in. So That's really exciting. It feels as if it's only yesterday that the thought of attending EGX this year would bring such joy. I'm never one to be a loner when attending these events either. It's usually me and my big brother that end up experiencing the overwhelming amount of games on display. Unfortunately, he decided not to turn up due to his lack of finance. So, my friend Gareth took the slot while it was still open. We both pitched in to pay for the hotel stay, the travel, and for the EGX super passes so that we could get in an hour early before everybody else. Well, almost everybody. And once I'm inside, the first thing on my mind was heading over to the PlayStation show floor and getting my hands on the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Ooh, I suppose the demo can wait. Well, I just tried a game from Game Talent Wales, which is a new Wales-based um, indie developer based in Wales. Uh, I tried one of the games called Scientific Shutdown, and it's like a four-base co-op shooter, and it's top-down as well. They had like three levels. And I tried to play the game and it was the wrong build that they had, so they had to switch to a different build. And I had a lovely time chatting with the people and they're aware of how indie the game development works. And it's actually quite a fun game. I did kind of die on the second level though, but I did get too get it far though. And then I kind of ran into a buzz where the electrocution lasted for a very long time and I couldn't move but only shoot. So that was one bug I told them to fix. And I did give them a couple of suggestions to make the game more improved as well. They might win a BAFTA someday, but I kind of like the game as it stands. So looking forward to playing it when it comes out on Steam. Did you know that Gareth loves pinball? Just look at how happy he is. Look at how ecstatic that kid is. The Retro Zone is where me and Gareth mostly hang out after hours when the show floor was closed. They have arcade cabinets, pinball machines, light gun games, ribbon games, PC LAN games, pretty much anything that made your childhood. We both played House of the Dead 2 with light guns, Donkey Kong Congo with the bongos, so I still have that game and the bongos as well. DJ Hero 2, and Windjammers 2 for a nice dose of two-player competition. Of course, I was the best player, not to brag. I never grew up in the 80s, so I was never exposed to this decade of gaming growing up, but it's fascinating how smooth they run and also how hard they are to play. That's probably why so many coins were wasted on them. Screw you, Donkey Kong! So after I delved back into the past, I bumped into a stall that was selling video game themed clothes on display. I bought this nice Cuphead t-shirt with colours that complement my washed out tan face, and they even had Chie's outfit, but no Yukiko outfit. Don't judge me. And to top it all off, you can't go wrong with fancy pins to stick onto your bag. The voucher codes, I don't think they're worth it. Radio, while my friend is resting for a bit down in the uh, call out section, I'm going to go right into the queue of Final Fantasy VII Remake, because I really want to try to demo that out, so I can test it out with my own eyes. I can come back and brag about it later. It's gonna be a very long line, as I'll show you just in a couple of minutes before I walk down here. It's a really long line already, so I'm gonna try and get in there before the line gets too big. It's already in the afternoon. I just hope I get my chance to play it. Oh yeah, I forgot about that game for a minute there, but not before I equip this seven kilogram buster sword on the way. Seriously, have you seen and feel how fucking heavy this weapon is? I even tried to do an omni slash with this behemoth, but it appears that I failed miserably as expected. Okay, now I'm ready to try out the remake. I was stuck in this line for at least an hour before I even got a chance to experience what Midgar looks like on current gen consoles. While I'm stuck in line, I could get a nice view of Rosie and Nathan playing some Contra. After I tried it out, my impressions were through the roof and I begged to Gareth to come over and try it out for himself. You and I have played the Final Fantasy VII Remake and are stuck in line for an hour. So I think first impressions, what do you think of it so far? Uh, so far, I believe it's much better than expectations. You know, all the original thrills and spills of the Final Fantasy VII are there. And the intense real-time combat is astounding. It goes far as translating all the original like, movies and souping up extra combat. I don't really know. Well, maybe the breaks are still there. All that sense that made Final Fantasy VII the game was shown there. I'm pretty much excited for the final version for the turn based combat option. Oh, I'm yeah. It's as close to the um, faithfulness of the original as it can. We shall see. 
I do like the uh, dynamic music that the, that the game has as well. Yeah, dynamic music is quite the underdog of the um, games industry. You've seen it in a few places like Metal Gear Solid, Final Fantasy XIII, more recently, um, a few favorite indie titles. Not to mention recent remakes of Crash Bandicoot Spyro, which had dynamic music with it as well. Absolutely. So, yeah, um, it begs the question, I guess. But it's I think you. It's nothing new dynamic Yeah, music, but, but it's something I... It more often than not is really the government Yeah, it's something I really appreciate ever since I started playing Nier Automata. That's yeah. what I like about it as well. So there's that. Well, since Microsoft slash Xbox aren't showing their ugly faces this year, let's go to one of my favorite floors at EGX, Nintendo! Ripe with energetic staff representatives and plenty of demos to try out, just so I could fill in my stamp collection to win Luigi's Mansion 3. Which didn't happen. Damn it. The reason why this is one of my favorite floors at EGX is the friendly atmosphere of the fans and staff there. They were very accommodating, welcoming, and ready to answer any questions that I had about the games. Not to mention the stage full of tournaments and matches where you can win goodies after trying to compete for a Tetris Maximus. I will get a chance today. Just you wait, Nintendo. I got my hands on Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo Olympic Games, which was alright, nothing to write home about in my opinion. The motion controls were a bit wonky, especially in the surfing minigame. Luigi's Mansion 3 had a long queue, and from my perspective, having not played the previous two installments, the gameplay is more akin to Ghostbusters where you vacuum up ghosts, but this time you whip them around for collateral damage, which was kind of funny to be honest. I'll just wait till the game goes on sale and once I'm caught up with the other two games. Despite me owning the full game of Link's Awakening and already completing it, Nintendo had the full game at EGX, which is quite surprising because usually they show timed demos as opposed to the whole experience. At the booth, I got as far as the third dungeon until my hands started to ache and my back started to sag for the switch I was holding. There wasn't really any prize or goodies if you do actually complete the game though, as disappointing as that sounds. You better do it next year, Nintendo! I can't just play every single game just so I can get a stamp, you know! I need more, damn you! <coughs> Meanwhile... Finally, we're here. It's, yeah, finally we're here. It's quite dark in here. So me and my friend are at the EGX Theatre. We're going to take part in Cinderdokin, which is a Mortal Kombat multiplayer experience where we get to control the movie as we go through it. Not sure how that's gonna pan out. <laughs> I hope to see you at the other side. Sadly, they couldn't play the Mortal Kombat movie on stage because Warner Brothers has threatened to sue the people running the show. So Gears have shitted your dead or alive instead. At least I can proudly say that I've seen the Dead or Alive movie. I even volunteered to go on stage at one point to play a match against someone. I believe I was playing as this guy. I hope you like seeing me get my ass whooped because I am completely out of my element here. Whatever, Tekken is more of my speed anyway. And thus concludes my shoe-waking first day at EGX. What a wild prologue and a promising start of what could be left to come. I forgot to mention that the Borderlands free booth were giving away these masks out like flies, so I grabbed one so I could do this. I am the fire, and you're playing <laughs> Batman. Yeah, riding the airlines was pretty breathtaking. And on the plus side, I was granted free entry. I decided to head straight to EGX early because Gareth was taking his sweet time in waking up and eating breakfast and I didn't want to wait. From the hotel, it was a 45 minute journey to get to EGX. Keep it in mind that special game I will eventually try soon. I'm definitely gonna try that game. Here's something I should have done on my first day. I managed to redeem my Super Pass wristband in order to grab some free EGX goodies, like the sweet bag and this lanyard, for example. <laughs> like I don't have enough of those. While I was there, I went ahead and bought this cool looking controller shirt that this girl was wearing, this arcade cabinet pin, and this controller pin. I think I'm turning into a pinhead. Who you calling pinhead? This is a line for Death Stranding, are you serious? It wasn't this big yesterday, I swear. 
On the way, one of the PlayStation representatives was going around telling us to install this Experience PlayStation app. Not the PlayStation Experience, in case you're confused. So that I can scan a QR code to unlock a quest where you can take a photo of yourself with photorealistic Norman Reedus over here to win a dynamic PS4 theme and a free t-shirt. I'm really sorry to anyone who won this, but this has got to be the most blandest t-shirt I've ever seen. It's just text and an emblem on your shoulder sleeves. How blind can you be with this? Get out of here. What did I think of the live demo though? Well then, I have just seen the 20 minute experience of Death Stranded, narrated by the man Hideo Kojima himself. It was quite a very interesting demo to see actually, because he was narrating most of the gameplay mechanics in it that like, it makes it like so more expansive, it looks so freaking cool. You can actually ride vehicles in it, like if you play Breath of the Wild, you can ride and surf on the shield. You can pretty much do that with the wheel carriers as well. When you carry too much stuff, you get exhausted. Um, you can rest to get rid of the blood on your feet and you can restore your stamina and your health. You can uh, for instruments from other players online and you can use them to boost morale and you can send likes to other players and put ladders down for you and help you out during boss battles and shit. It's just so much going on in the game and I really can't wait to actually try it when I actually get my hands on it. It's going to be such cool of a game and then probably people will play it, not, not actually play it in like a year or a year's time. But definitely I'm getting that day one because a lot of people are going to be putting ladders on there. There's probably going to be like a option where you can just turn off online functionality altogether so that way you can just have it as a seller experience. But probably the experience you're gonna get is when other people are playing it and they cheer you on, send you likes, send you weapons and all that, and boost your morale as well. So it's a really interesting game. Like a lot of gameplay mechanics are like at play, and there's so much to offer here. So I'm definitely looking forward to it when it comes out. Did I ever tell you that I follow PlayStation Access? No. Well, now you know. I do prefer PlayStation Access over Outside Extra because Outside Extra tries way too hard to be funny that it just comes off as cringy. PlayStation Access has this sense of genuity about them. The people on the show are quite passionate about games and are open to telling their own stories. It feels wholesome, not gonna lie. I'm a fond fan of the Metal Gear Stupid series and to see Nathan and David attempt to play MGS2 on stage live while Rob slowly becomes disappointed backstage is such a wonderful experience. These are just some of the highlights I recorded. Okay, maybe I know you have to get in the locker and then when they come around the corner you can first yeah, now. Go to the one with the wiggle on Okay, don't do that. Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> No chance to play Tetris 99 on stage today, but I have gotten the chance to try out the two-piece share battle backstage. The pro controller I was playing on had terrible delay, but regardless, I managed to secure a couple of KOs. So I diverted my attention into trying out some more Nintendo games while I'm here. First I tried out Ring Fit Adventure, which requires the use of the Ring Con to play. Here you see Gareth deep in the zone in keeping fit and trying to aim for a high score. For me, I tried out the Adventure Mode and one tight rope minigame that I got a right guess on. What I liked about the Adventure Mode was the combination of RPG elements taking center stage and fitness training from their past titles like Wii Fit, two genres I never thought would belong on a game like this. Then again, Nintendo are no stranger to blend two genres together. Take a look at Mario and Rabbids for example. However, the price was a bit excessive for me, £65 to get the game and the ring con accessory inside. On the other hand, it's a perfect game for me because I love playing RPGs on my 3DS and on the Switch, and I've been getting weight recently, so this is an ideal game for me to be active on. I did ask a question about the ring con, if it's going to be compatible with other Switch titles like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. They answered that Ring Fit Adventure is more of a tech demo for the hardware and do want the idea to be implemented. The next game I tried was Super Mario Maker 2, I don't really see myself spending my hours on a creation game like this, I usually prefer to play someone else's stages instead of creating my own. The demo that Nintendo had was a couple of courses to get you accustomed to the controls, and the downloaded courses with 3% clear rates that I really struggled at. I did manage to complete one course though, which took me like half an hour to do, and just when I was engrossed to try out more courses, I crashed the game. So yeah, that was my introduction to Super Mario Maker 2. Before I forget, I wanted to note that I also queued up in line for the Cyberpunk 2077 demo. To do that, you have to sign your name in and put on a wristband that grants you entry inside the booth. Luckily, I didn't have to do that today because there were two free slots available, so I seized the opportunity and rushed inside. What I saw of the 45 minute demo was a lot to take in. And the line 
server is quite interesting. Like halfway in the game, you get to unlock abilities and you can change and customize your um, cyberpunk character. You can go aggressive or you can be stealthy and tactics. And you can choose different dialogue responses that corresponds to your kind of upbringing as a character. So pretty much your whole personality presents your character. You can change what kind of dialogue you make in the game. So the city is very vibrant, quite large. I bet it's going to be a lot of gameplay time that I'm going to spend on Cyberpunk 2077. Makes sense because it's one of the most anticipated games for a long time, right next to Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, you can have different play styles and then when you go to your perks, you can sort of customize it in however your character wants it. And you can actually explore different sections of the city. You can switch from first person to third person in the demo. You can spare and kill people that you want to kill or you want to spare. It might change the outcome of the story and all that. But it actually it looks like a pretty cool game, April 2020. Can't wait to actually play that and hopefully get into the seats of CG Project Red's history of consistently good quality games. I think it'd be pretty good, I would say. I don't know what my friend has to say about it, but he seems to enjoy it a lot more than I did. Nine out of 10, he said. Not a public sport, but it's getting there. And then after that, I went to the EGX theater because there were some physical challenges and in-game challenges on Doom Eternal. Sadly, I didn't have had a turn. There was a guy and there was a girl. And I remember the girl winning because she knew how to play the game and managed to use the weapon wheel to her advantage in one of the challenges, which got a really huge uproar from the audience. So, huge support there. with so many followers on it now so you know best of luck to her she does achieve that thousand plus followers i think i need to play doom eternal tomorrow cyberpunk has already got, got off my checklist for the second day next up is doom eternal i really need to play that one after i have done winding down at the retro zone and managing to beat my own high score on pac-man it's time to head back to the hotel and rest my weary feet up tomorrow doom eternal i'm coming for you Before I get into Doom Eternal, you may have seen me show off my reward for finding the golden ticket with a one month PlayStation Now subscription. Many have succeeded, many have failed. I asked Gareth to test his reflexes inside the ventilation chamber to see if he can win as well. And the outcome? So who's gonna be? He's gonna get the golden ticket. I 50%. I think you need some time alone after that. So what should I do here? Oh my. That predator looks somewhat terrifyingly cool. Although I'm not excited for predator hunting grounds, the costumes certainly entice me. So how about a selfie? Yeah, it works a lot, man. <laughs> I had to sit down after that, and I came across this strange Capri Sun circle. Surely it's an outdated meme. I better ask someone. What's that supposed to be? We have a friend who streams and he's obsessed with Capri Suns. Um, What's his name? Jack Little. Jack he's Little. He's a real boy. Right, and he likes Capri Suns. Oh, right, okay. So we've never met him before. Well, I haven't. So I'm making a summoning circle to ah. try and bring him over here. Ah, okay. Ah, that's adorable. <laughs> I might need to see him on Twitch one day, hopefully. You should. Let me tell you his name. Yeah, sure. He's a real boy, Jack, and then it's Little, but it's spelled with a Y. Okay. L Y T T A. L Y T T A. Okay, I get you. Three hour long wait for Doom Eternal. I better endure it while I can. But I tell you what, it's cutting close. You got more weapons, you got more mechanics, you got this little shoulder sub weapon for you where you can launch your grenades, flame belts to get um, armor, and
then you can use the chainsaw for ammo. The chainsaw isn't like cut for ammo anymore because it's like a separate sub weapon now. So you can actually use the one sh shot kill enemy and you can get more ammo for it. So you know, weapon wheel is a bit more expensive than ever because you got more weapons this time. Can't wait to get the big fucking sword in the, in the game as well as the big fucking gun as well. I think it's one of the only games that I'm excited for when it comes to Bethesda because most of the other, other games don't really live up to par. But Doom Eternal looks like it's going to be a real fun ride. I'm not sure if it's going to disappoint me when I actually get the game, but I hope they don't. Because otherwise I would lose faith in Bethesda as well as the rest of the gaming industry. I, I don't know what to tell you. But it looks like a pretty fun demo so far. Three hours of my fucking life waiting in the line. Fucking worth it, I must say. And I also got to talk to some new people as well. So you know, that goes without saying, I guess. Pretty cool guys. Good man, they look pretty cool. Wow, I'm not even sure where to start. This section was where I spent most of my time and most of my money on gaming products that are sure to befit me as a true fan of a medium. They were selling stuff like paintings, canvases, candy, mugs, t-shirts, pins, badges, key rings, and of course, video games. This was the store that I kept coming back to, and from the looks of it, so did everybody else. They have so many games. Imported games from Japan, Game Boy consoles, hats, game boxes, and even energy drinks for God's sake. Just look at these games as far as the eye can see. How could I not let them take my money? This store has claimed Gareth's wallet already. He's bought a modern game boy that has an installed backlight and includes Buster Move 2 on it. You got Buster Move. Oh, that's a really good game. Yeah, I love that. So, let's break it down. First, I bought the stylish Metal Gear Solid canvas with Raiden, Solid Snake, and Mr. X. This K on canvas for Gareth as a gift because of his trip to Japan a couple of months ago. This lead voice activated mask to wear for Halloween. There was a girl next to me who told me that this game is pretty good, so I went up and bought it. These fancy lead scrolling glasses that serves different lighting functions for lovely night outs, two meme pins, and a communist key ring for shits and giggles. It seems that I'm not alone during the blizzard shitstorm, however. This giant Crash Bandicoot figurine, a whole chest of Crash Team racing pins, a Kingdom Hearts key ring, fittingly enough. And look at this, the only Game Boy Advance SP that was on the shelf. Grab that shit straight away to add to my Game Boy collection, as well as a shit ton of games. As much as I have completely sucked my wallet dry thanks to the retail village, I'm definitely coming back here again next year. But for now, let's chill out at the PlayStation Access area and watch some Shenmue 3 gameplay. By the way, isn't it weird how PlayStation has supplied beanbags on their stage floor as opposed to Nintendo? Although I have requested for a refund due to Shenmue 3's plan to release on Epic Games Store, it still doesn't deter my feelings of wanting to see what this installment has to offer. Just look at this stellar gameplay going on here! I know, really exciting to behold. Speaking of exciting, how about laying back to some speedruns? I may not be the right person who is properly invested in speedruns, but as soon as I saw Octopath travel on the schedule, I just had to go for it. Then it continued to Super Metroid. Eww. I feel like playing some Donkey Kong Pac-Man at Defender now. Once I'm completely tired, my third day has come to an end, and it's time to head back to the hotel. Apparently, I wasn't the only person who was tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Where the heck is the control delete key? Should we abandon ship? Or sound <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that was brilliant. Um, yeah. Hey. day at EGX now, and I swear, this line keeps getting bigger and bigger the more I come back here. The weekends take their heavy tolls, I see. It's time to start this day off strong by rushing to Nintendo to try out the demo for Pokemon Sword and Shield. Personally, I grew out of the franchise after Pokemon Crystal, got reintroduced back into the franchise with Pokemon Go and Sun, and grew out again. So do pardon me if this new installment isn't filling up my already low expectations. I was more occupied with stirring up a conversation with one of the staff while Gareth is having a grand old time with the demo. But it's just like more Pokemon to collect. Yeah, new Pokemon. I mean, that, uh, if there was no new Pokemon, I think people would be a bit disappointed. But I mean, yeah, yeah. I think they already just wanted before, you know. That's a whole Dexit campaign for you, kind of follow that, sure, sure, but you sure. know. I do especially like this little tidbit during the gym battle when I approached with this question. What's the best Pokemon to use in this demo? Well, we're in a water gym, but we have a bit of a mix. Rookie is pretty strong overall here. You have Yamper as well, 
is electric, which is quite good, but Yamper doesn't seem to have the survivability that the Berkey has. Alright. And then immediately after that, this happened. Oh, that's just not very good. Critical <laughs> hit. Unlucky. Wow. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Don't worry, Gareth has won the gym badge regardless. Meanwhile, I was lining up for the Neo 2 demo, which thankfully was a short queue. I played the first Neo back in 2017, but not to full completion, so I'm intrigued to see what improvements they implemented to make this sequel stand out from its predecessor. I need to unequip my hat for this one. Well, you gotta love the decor inside the Neo 2 PlayStation demo. Uh, it's a playable demo, and I think if you die at the first boss, which happens to be some dark demon horse, that's a demo. So I didn't manage to defeat it, but I did try to be more strategic around it, learn its attack patterns, and then dodge at the opportune moment. Because I was building such heavy weapons and armor, my stamina and stability was likely to decrease a little bit, but I wanted to do more damage, but I, I kind of leveled up my key, mostly by strength and endurance. Well, it didn't get me anywhere, so I kind of lost to the first boss battle. So, you know, fair play. There are a couple of new additions to the game as well. You can pet certain things in the levels. There are new monsters, obviously, but you do get to play as a different character. You can also, like, customize your own character instead. Quite a lot of controls to grasp with, but I remember playing the first Neo, I kind of got accustomed to that, so I sort of remembered how the gameplay was back then. So I sort of got used to it quickly than I expected. There's a lot of more things you can do with your yokai in that game, though. R1 can be, like, binded to, like, triangle and circle or square to do burst attack and also you can summon your own yard in spirit. But yeah, that was all in the first game as well. There's a couple of improvements along the way. But yeah, I'm actually looking forward to the game. I need to get back to the first Neo again. I need to complete that at one point. It appears Gareth is enjoying the spectacle of Resogun on the PlayStation Access stage. Don't you go anywhere, man. I'll be right back. Since I'm growing up strong, I decided to try as many games as I could before the day ends. Shadow Play is a strange blend of card-based strategy gameplay. No Straight Rows I remember watching a trailer for and could not resist trying it out. It's quite a fun game, combining the use of two music styles and interweaving it together with combat. It's wonderful to see people playing the demo, at least. Demo, on the other hand, was the first PlayStation VR game I've ever tried, as the PSVR tryouts were fully booked. Because of my backlog of rhythm games I am, Demo just had to be the one to go for if and when I buy a PSVR headset. I did really well on my first try on hard difficulty, but the kid behind me was so impressed and wanted to have a go. He didn't get very far. Next, I tried Time Spinner for the Switch, which already came out in June, but I didn't know about it until this point. Gameplay was quite simple and fun, so I might pick this up one day. Blasphemous with his gothic pixel style and his challenging difficulty looks like my game to buy next year. Death Trap Dungeon, which features Eddie Marsan sitting on a chair pretending to be a dungeon master. I'll stick with the PS1 version, thanks. And to top it all off, Prismagic The Song of the Seventh Sister. Three months in development. The game is like a pseudo Toho R type bullet hell game, utilizing the mixture of colored magic to defeat enemies so you can rack up a high score. I mean, look at my high score. That's second place compared to the one I had on stage. Controls felt a bit wonky in the demo, and I thought some slowdowns during the color mixing was just a software issue, but it turns out it's part of the game that gives you more ample time to think about what colors to choose. A simple game, nonetheless, and I had a lovely conversation with the development team. Oh if it's ready, will you show it off at E3? Uh, I don't think that's likely, uh, uh, because yeah. of the way the... But if opportunity arrives, will you? I honestly don't know. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, we are way too early in development to... to Know that. We would like to, like, we, we would like to show it off. Yeah, I mean, there's always an opportunity there, isn't there? Uh... So, I finally set out what I had to do, and... What's this? Gareth is on stage playing Resogun with Rob and Nathan? Damn, I'm so proud of you, man! You're on YouTube now! Look at these people praising you in the live chat! Okay, to be honest, he did really well to stride up on stage, beat Nathan's high score, and came back with Parappa the Rapper coasters. But he's not the only one that managed to secure the spot on stage. Here I am! You never thought to see me on stage, did you? Let me tell you all about it. Yes! I secured that chance again on that Tetris 99 stage! The top place is number three. What place did I come in? No! <laughs> ah, I was so close though! I was so close to getting that winning that title just to like make everyone be like, whoa, crazy! But I did get this lovely bag though, and there's a wristband inside of it, I think it's a lanyard. And I'm just gonna relax, get this off my shoulder, because I'm shaking while I'm holding the camera right now. Because being on that stage, 
holy shit, I thought I had to deal with stage fight before, not at this level. So, you know, before I played, I took my watch off, rolled up my sleeves, put my bags down, I was born ready to do this. <laughs> so there you go. I did manage to try it, but you know, I only got so far, but I did use a couple of strategies to get along the way. And also, I talked to the guy next to me though, so that was a pretty good conversation. I am gonna go chill out now. That was too much for me. game arcade cabinets are closed or shut down at least not sure what is happening if they're actually gonna fire it up or we're actually gonna be leaving early from the they cut the power to the pinball machines as well I don't know why they cut the power to that but there are some pinball machines that are working are they closing down early yeah, down oh man I thought the after hours are happening until like 10 o'clock Oh, that sucks. I want to get a high score in Pac-Man, man. Oh, well, maybe next year, I guess. It was so much fun. GX has unfortunately ended and I'm back in my room safe and sound I really enjoyed my time there it was a wonderful experience that well, I will never ever forget again I talked to new people made a couple of new friends and most of all my friend really enjoyed it as well props to him for putting himself in the line with fire like that and I'm really proud of him as well as he is very proud of me as well I wish I could go to EGX every year now this one has been much more memorable than the last one. My battery is about to die, and my SD card is almost running out of storage, so before it actually runs out, I just want to say thank you for giving me the wonderful joy of playing video games as a hobby. And it's thanks to video games that I sort of beat it out of my own phase of not even trying video games anymore, so I can always fall back into the same trap, am I right? But you know what? I'm here until the ride ends. Until next year, folks. Take care, guys.